Good morning, church. Hey, I almost lost my voice in worship today. That was good stuff. Thank you, Josh and the team for leading us. We don't get to have Josh with us much anymore uh, because he is out at the West Shore quite a bit, but we're so glad when we can steal him and bring him downtown. And uh, good things happening in the West Shore, our West Shore location. Very exciting. Next week, they go back to Belmont High School. Yes. Which gives them, you know, another 140 seats more so that they can be in one service together and then grow from there. We anticipate that they'll be in two services again, but at least they can kind of be all together for a little while. Good things happening at Coastline. And this series really is all just about, you know, our heart, our values. Um, If you got here at the beginning of the service or before the service began, you would have seen the the pre-roll video. And it, it outlines a few of those values. And we've been talking through them. Um, And we've been using the book of Isaiah um, as a guide. And so I want to turn back to Isaiah 61, which is where we have found a few verses to kind of land with. Um, And uh, two weeks ago, I shared um, that these first two verses in Isaiah 61 were uh, words that Jesus read in the temple in Nazareth, or the synagogue in Nazareth. And then he said, these are fulfilled in your hearing today. In other words, Jesus made this ancient prophecy about himself. And you, as followers of Jesus, you start to embody this same promise, this same reality. And you'll see where that fits in in the, in the later uh, verses. But we're going to focus on verse 6 today as our, as our text. But we're going to read the first three verses again. It's on 607 in the Bible that's in your your pew, but you can also read along with me on the screen. It says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, And to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. And then the first half of verse 6, which is our text today, says, And you will be called priests of the Lord, and you will be named ministers of the Lord of our God. And Coastline Church, this is true of you. God's put a call on your life as a church family, but also as individuals, a call to be priests and ministers. I want to talk about that today. I want to remind you of where we've been. Our first week, we talked about how we need a revival of salvation in our world. Last week, Pastor Lucas preached a message on finding freedom and and how we do that together in community. And today I want to talk about purpose. I want to talk about purpose today. And so I'm going to start, as Pastor Chris alluded to, our common purpose, which is simply this, helping people take the next step in their spiritual journey by revealing the life-giving message of Jesus. We believe that the life-giving message of Jesus changes lives. Amen? Yeah. And, and you're, you're going to hear in here, especially in the beginning part, that we're, we're here to help people take steps. Part of that's just understanding that as a church, we realize that growth happens when we move. If we stay still, if we grow stagnant, then we cannot, we're not growing anymore. We're not developing. In fact, when I go see the physio and he's helping me with my back, he says to me, how much movement are you doing? And then I change the subject. <laughs> right? Exactly. Because the truth is, is I need to be moving. My, my back isn't going to get any better if I stop moving. And the truth is, is when we stop moving in our spiritual lives, the growth stops happening. And, and Jesus is always inviting us into a next step. And I actually love the way the scriptures talk about this. We use next step language because we want to keep growing. And we understand that it's not about accumulating knowledge. It's about moving forward with God. It's about stepping out. It's about faith steps that lead us into new places, about about going into new depths with the Lord, about climbing new heights with the Lord. And, And there's a combination of movements that take place in the life of a believer. And and some of them are the stopping, and some of them are the going. You see, when Jesus 
delivered his model of discipleship to his followers, it was two foundational commands. Come and go. Come and go. And, and, and in other words, Jesus is saying, come. You'll find in the scriptures, come to me. Listen to me. Speak to me. Rest in me. Abide in me. This is, this is one of the commands, the foundational commands of Jesus to his followers. Both of them require movement. I have to move from where I am to where Jesus is. But then there's also the go. Go with me. Go into all the world. Go as sheep among wolves. Go together, but not alone. But go. In, in the Old Testament, God spoke this way, you know, in, in regard to this coming and going. He said, for six days you can go, but on the seventh day you need to come. There's a sense of the balance of that. You can't keep going without continuing to come. And, and that's a beautiful image for us, Coastline Church. Think about the coastline, the tide that comes and goes. There's this picture of the movement, of the, of the coming in and the going out. And, and that's why we're here today. We've come so that we can then again be sent out. We come to be refreshed. We come to learn. We come together to be reminded of our faith. We come together to share that faith with others. And then we go again to be a blessing because we're called to movement. That's why we call Coastline Church a movement. It's not that we're hiding church. No, it's a movement because we're called to movement. We've got to keep moving. We've got to come so that we can go. And so that's why we will always and forever offer next steps. We want you to find the next step in your journey. And let me give you the example from Scripture where Jesus actually calls his disciples. Today's message is actually entitled, We Are Coastline, but the subtitle is, We Are Called. And so listen to this in Mark 3. It says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12, these were his disciples, the apostles, that they might be with him, come, and that they might be, and that he might send them out to preach, go. And so just like the disciples, you have the same calling to come and to go. And your growth requires, your, your calling requires that you flow along that stream of coming and going. And here's the problem. The problem is that many of us don't know what we're called to. That's the problem. Because, because we haven't stopped long enough to come and to be with Jesus in order to let him reveal that. And we call this process, the process of learning your calling, we call this discovering your purpose. And this is big for us. It's one of our pillars. Like I said, at the beginning of each of our services in the pre-roll, you'll see it. It's know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. We'll talk about make a difference next week. But for today, let's talk about purpose. You know, I just love it when God speaks to me through ordinary things. And I think he has to do this because I'm, I'm actually not very smart. And so I need a very simple picture. And so God gave me one even just this last week. So here's how it went. We were in a rush. No kidding. Anybody else? Yeah. We were in a rush and we were leaving the house. And Lisa said to me about our dog, whose name is Dexter, and uh, she said, hey, can you check to see if Dexter has water in his water dish? And so I go there, and no, it's empty. I'm a bad dog owner. And so I pick up the bowl, and I go to the closest possible water source, which is the toilet. No, just kidding. To... <laughs> That's gross. Come on. I actually like my dog. Okay, so I went to the sink in the bathroom instead of the toilet. Okay, I went to the sink in the bathroom, and I brought back this bowl of water. And as I'm walking, I'm like in a hurry, and I'm walking. And you know what happens when you walk with a bowl full of water? It starts to swirl around. And, and then what happens? It starts to slosh out and spill everywhere, right? And so all of a sudden, I'm walking, and I'm out, oh, 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 and I stop. Have you ever had that experience? Walking with a cup and, or whatever, and you got to stop. And what happens when you stop? When you stop, the water... Goes, grows calm and still. And I noticed that as I was holding this water dish, when the water finally got still, I took a breath. <sighs> okay. And I could see my reflection in the water. And I took the bowl and I put it down. And as I turned around, God spoke to me in the very common, ordinary of that moment and said, that bowl of water is like our lives. And, and it's a picture of calling 
Our lives are swirling around. There's so much going on and we're moving so fast. And what Jesus is inviting us to is a time to pause. And when we stop, when we come, we stop. And when we stop, the water of our life grows still and our reflection can be seen. Now, now hear me in this. Your reflection is only important when God reveals the design behind that reflection. In other words, he shows you what you're really made to be. When you stop with Jesus, when you come to Jesus and and everything stops swirling around, he reveals your true image to you and and, and he shows you how he's made you. We, We say it this way, your design reveals your destiny. And in other words, God puts you together in a very special and unique and beautiful way. And I am so thankful for that. It's the beautiful tapestry of God's family. It's amazing. Your personality, your giftings, even your preferences, you know, the things that you're passionate about, the things that you love, all of that comes together in you and and teaches you, reveals to you who it is that God has made you to be. And, And we're so thankful for that. It's such a joy to discover your purpose and who God has called you to be. Isaiah 61, verse 6, which we were reading, says that we're called priests of the Lord and and that we're supposed to be named ministers of our God. These two images are are quite vivid if you think about the Old Testament, especially in regard to the priest. Because the priest, his job was to bring the people to God. Come on, I'm going to bring you, and not only am I going to bring you, I'm going to bring a sacrifice that atones. I'm going to present you to the Lord, and the Lord is going to bless you. But this word minister actually has the other, the other in mind, not just bringing the people to God. The minister brings God to the people. I've been with the Lord and he's blessed me. And now I want to share a testimony. I want to be an expression of his love. I want to minister to others. And so you're called not just to be a priest, but you're called to be a priest and a minister. And that's awesome. What an awesome calling. And that's for all of us as the people of God, the followers of Jesus. And, and why is this important? Because it's not, you know, there's probably a million ways to do that. A million ways to be a priest and a minister. A million ways to bring people to God. A million ways to bring God to the people. All of the gifts that you have. God wants to use them beautifully. But your job is to discover how God wants to manifest that calling in you. That's your job. I I can't do that for you. That's your job. And some of you go, oh no, I don't need another job. Like I have a job and it's really busy. I don't need another job. And some of you are saying like, I just retired. I just got out of a job. Don't give me a job, Andy. The truth is, is that this is not supposed to feel like a burden. I use the word job very loosely, very lightly, because it's a joy. It's actually awesome. It's so much fun to discover the way God puts you together. It's really fun. In fact, I love the way the Bible speaks of this in, where's my verse? Oh, there it is, Proverbs 25, 2. Take a look at this verse. It says, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter. So in other words, God likes to hide little things, little treasures. He likes to hide them. God conceals a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. So in other words, God in his great wisdom sees you as this beautiful, amazing, multidimensional person. And inside of you, he has planted, even if you will, hidden for joy's sake, special gifts inside of you, traits, abilities, uh, passions. And, and your joy is to discover them. And like, God, you're amazing. Look what you put in me. I mean, and, and honestly, doesn't that sound like fun? Of course, because we're all narcissists. We want to know more about us, don't we? Right? No, I'm, but I'm being, I'm being serious. It is so much fun to discover what God has put in you. There's a glory. That's what this verse says. There's a glory in the discovery. There's a glory in the search. Oh, thank you, God. Look at that. Thank you for using me. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for putting that in my life because that person needed it. And so you used me. What an amazing, amazing thing that is. I don't want that to feel daunting. I want it to feel exciting. There's a glory in the search. And and here's the thing is you're not alone in the process. 
In fact, we've worked really hard over a long period of time to develop material, if you will, curriculum, if you will, that has now turned into videos, video teaching, video learning, that actually walks you through a process of discovering what God has put in you, discovering your purpose. And these are called Grow Track videos. Have you heard of Grow Track? Has anybody heard of Grow Track? Have you seen? We talk about it most weeks because it's really important to us. Why? Because we're a church that wants people taking steps. And, and so I, I want to invite you today. We're doing something we've actually never done before. Because we so believe in this process, and because it's so hard for some of us to get you know, into that process, we've decided that today, after this service, we're going to show you the very first of the four videos. For all of those of you who have said, I've never done Grow Track before, and I'd like to take this journey, we're going to invite you just to stay after for like 10 minutes, and then we'll play that video, and, and you'll be out of here in, you know, 15 more minutes after that. But that is a way for you to begin this process. We want to make it as easy as possible. I think you'll feel encouraged. I think you'll feel inspired, because we're here. We're called to discover our purpose. But I want to speak to another group of people as well. And this may be the majority of us or those of you that have been with us for any length of time. And, and you'd say, you know what? I've been at Coastline for a while. Maybe you're watching online. Um, maybe you're here in person today. But you need to know that today is a day of reminder. It's a reminder for you. You have a calling. God has called you. There's something in you. There, there's there's a gift that needs to be used for the body of Christ. It, it, it's what we're called to do. There's a calling on your life. And for some of you, you haven't stepped out in that calling in a really long time. And it's like the fire has died. And, and you get what I mean when I say without movement, there's not growth. Because you feel that in your own soul. You're swirling around and life is busy. But you can honestly say, you know what? I'm not effectively following God's call and purpose in my life. And here's what God wants to say to you. 2 Timothy 1.6 fan into flame the gift of God which is in you. Fan it into flame. Fan it into flame. You may know your gifts, but the fire to use them may have gone out. It's time to fan that call into flame. It's time to discover that purpose once again and use it for God. And this verse was written from a spiritual father, Paul, to a spiritual son, Timothy. He says, come on, Timothy. I know it's rough out there. I know you've had a hard time. I know it's been tough. I know where you are. I know what you're up against. Was Timothy discouraged? Was Timothy depressed? Was Timothy distracted? Was he confused? Was he hurt? Was he afraid? Possibly. Possibly. But Paul was saying to him, come on, Timothy, fan it into flame again. Stir up those coals. Come on, let's breathe some fresh life on this fire. Let's put some new kindling down. Let's get the flames going again. Why? Because you have a calling. You have a calling from God, and, and there's more. Timothy, there's still more in your life. Some of you need to hear that today. There is more in your life. There is still more. God has more for you, and God wants to use you, and it's up to you to believe for that. You have gifts. And I say that with great confidence. Some of you are sitting there and say, you haven't met me. No, no, you have gifts. I'll tell you why. Because the Bible says that a spiritual gift has been given to every one. Why? To help the body. Yeah, amen. Everybody's got a spiritual gift. You're not left out. So I'm confidently speaking to every person in the room. And so it's not God... Do I have a gift? It's no, God, reveal and remind me of the gifts that you put in there. Um, have you ever helped anybody move? <laughs> it's like the worst day of the year when someone says, can you help me move? You're like, uh, I, think, uh, I think I'm busy. I haven't even told you when it is. No, no, I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> I, I have a pickup truck and people will ask me if they can use my truck. But what they forget to tell me is they also want to use my back, right? <laughs> So I've actually, that's my disclaimer. You can use my truck anytime. You just can't use my back, right? Uh, have you ever helped somebody move? Yes, you have. You know what's funny when you help people move? Is sometimes there's these big guys, you know, the Ilalus with the muscles, 
on their earlobes. It's, I'm sorry, I'm just, you're, you're one handsome man. Strong. Yeah. Anyway, point being, there's a Lalu's in this world. You know what's funny when you help people move? Is not a Lalu, but guys like a Lalu come in and they're like, okay, I'm here to help you move. And they pick up the little tiny boxes. You're like, what? Come on, man. No, no, no. Big guys take the bedroom set. All right. Get in there. Load it up. Right? Absolutely. And listen, some of you, some of you, you have heavy gifts. God has blessed you. You have a keen mind. You have capacity. You run companies. You, you have possibility. You have, you have giftings. You have specialties. It's time for people who have heavy gifts to do some heavy lifting. Amen? If you've got heavy gifts, do heavy ministry. Come on, let's do something together. Let's fan it into flame. Let's use the gifts that God has given us. It's time to use your gifts. Some of you are sitting here and saying, I used to do this at my old church. Well, guess what? You're at your new church. Do it here, right? So you say, well, before COVID, I used to. Guess what? It's God willing after COVID. Let's do it. Come on. Let's fan it into flame. We're not going to sit around anymore. We're going we're gonna to move. We're going to go. There's leadership and teaching and faith and healing and wisdom and discerning of spirits and speaking and influence and prayer. There are so many gifts, and they're all from God and for his glory. Use your gift. Use your gift, church. This is the call on us. And, you know, this changes over the generations. It changes over the years of life, over the seasons of life. I don't do the same things I used to do when it comes to ministry. I do different things now. Thank God, because I can't hang out with teenagers anymore, <laughs> except the ones that I gave life to. They're the only ones, right? At some point, like you, it's time to do a different type of ministry, right? And, and so I think about some of you that are in a new season, and it's such a wonderful time to go back to that verse from Proverbs. It's the glory of God to conceal a matter. It's the glory of kings to search it out. Come on. If you're in a different season of life now, search it out again. Search it out again. There's a new gift for this season. God has something for you, and there's more. There's more in you. I, I love this picture. You know, this, this verse we're using about fanning it into flame because the gifts are supposed to be hot. That's why it says fan them into flame. I mean, there's, there's, there's many versions of this verse in the Bible. Keep it ablaze, it says in one version. Keep it alive. One of my favorites, kindle afresh. I like that. Throw some new wood on there. Come on. Let's get the sparks flying again. I like this one. Keep feeding the white hot flame of God's gift. Do you feel encouraged by that? Do you feel challenged by that? Keep the flame hot. You know, we had a pastor at our church back in the 30s. His name was C.M. Ward. He, after he left us, you know, we propelled him to greatness. And he flew off to the U.S. and became the revival time voice of radio all the way through to the 70s. Presidents of Bible College, pastored big churches down in the States. And it's all because of us. Amen? Yeah. It's just our anointing. We just gave it to him and off he went. So... Anyway, I'm being funny, but I was actually, you can still see him on YouTube. He's now gone home to be with Jesus. But one of the things that he said, and this is the quote for, for today, you know, we're talking about keeping it ablaze, keeping it alive, kindling afresh, keep feeding the white hot flame of God's gift. Listen to this verse, or this quote, not verse. He says, Science, scientists can figure out how to create, scientists can't figure out how to create a light without heat. But churches have figured out how to have the light with no heat. Ouch. It kind of stings a bit. The truth is, I don't want to be a church that has the light with no heat. What's the point? God's called us to be on fire for him to be a white hot flame using our gifts to bless the world around us, to minister to God's church. Come on, we need to pour some gasoline on the fire, amen? It might singe our eyebrows a bit, but it's gonna be an awesome moment, right? Let's let the fire of God burn in us. We've gotta be a church that gives off heat. I want you to, to think of that heat as the anointing. That's a word that the Bible uses, anointing. 
And, and the anointing is from God, comes down upon you, gifting you to do what he's called you to do. That's why Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is on me. The Holy Spirit was on Jesus and he moved in power. And we need that kind of an anointing. When you're on fire, you provide warmth to everyone who gets around you. Can you just imagine it? Can you see it with me? Can you see the church ablaze in every, every sphere of influence? Can you imagine the church ablaze? Can you imagine our kids, ministry workers, anointed? Can you imagine our youth workers powerfully anointed? Can you imagine our parking team powerfully anointed? Can you imagine the worship team, the preaching? But listen, let's go further. Our outreach team, you at your workplace, you in your neighborhood, you with your family. Can you just imagine? <laughs> Fan it into flame. The gifts of God are there to be used. Fan it into flame. Why? Because there's more. There's more in you and you know it. So let the Lord bless you and use you to give off heat to a dark and a cold world to be a blessing. And as I wrap up the message, I want to take you to this last verse. It's in 2 Timothy, and it's just a little further down. We were, we were reading um, in verse 6, but now I want to read in verse 14. Because here is how Paul continues to encourage young Timothy. He says, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Timothy, God gave you a gift. Guard it. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. So let me just, let me just go here with you for a minute. This verse says, guard it, not hide it. Guard it, not ignore it. And so guarding it means using it. Guarding it means strengthening it. Guarding it makes it, means make it alive. Use it, develop it, discover it for some of you. And then you can live that out because there's an anointing from the Holy Spirit to help you do that. You're not alone in it. And wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be just really sad if we just never discovered or never actually practiced all that God had put in our lives, that's not living. <laughs> that's not the full life that God's called us to. Let's fan it into flame. Church, let's fan it into flame. Coastline Church, let's be ablaze for Jesus and let's make a difference in our world. I want you to pray with me now. Would you just bow your heads for a moment with me? You know, and I just think that so often God is faithful to bring people to our church who just need to get their hearts right with Jesus. And so just in this moment of prayer, heads are bowed and we're just, just all reflecting and praying together. I wonder if there's anybody here who says, you know, I hear you talk, Andy, but I, I need the warmth of Jesus's life in me. I need his forgiveness. I need his mercy. I need his grace today. Maybe you're here today and you're able to say, I, I am not living in a relationship with Jesus and I want to make that right before I leave this place. If you're here today and you say, that's where I'm at, would you, would you just slip your hand up? And I'm just going to pray for you. Thank you. Others that want to lift up their hands, I'm going to pray for you. Yes, thank you. Right down here. Others, come on, let's respond to Jesus. I need his warmth. Thank you. I need his forgiveness. I need his mercy. Thank you. Right down here and here. And here, thank you. I need that, thank you. Yes, I need that today. I'm calling on heaven for that. So Jesus, you've seen these hands lifted up. And Lord, you know the struggle, you know the battle, you know the challenge that, has been, that they've been facing. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would literally, Lord, flood them with your love, flood them with the warmth of your presence. Come, Spirit of God, testify to them that they are children of God. Lord, they give their lives over to you. And so I bless them in Jesus' mighty name. 
And now continuing to pray for the rest of us. I wonder if those of you that would be willing, would you join me in, in a posture of openness? Maybe just palms up toward the Lord and pray with me because the call here is to movement. The call here is to fan into flame the gift that's there. And so Holy Spirit, come. You're the one who helps us. You help us guard the gift. I'm so thankful that the gifts of God are, are without repentance. I'm so thankful that they're still there, Lord. God, forgive us for hiding them. Forgive us for ignoring them. And Lord, set us on fire, oh God. Fan us into flame, Lord, with a passion for your church, with a passion for our world. Oh God, use us. Help us discover and develop and use our gifts to bless your church and to love our world. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, uh, Pastor Chris will help us with the transition in just a minute, but why don't you stand with me and let's, let's sing. Let's sing a response to the Lord. And then we're going to give you an opportunity to stick around if you'd like. But uh, Pastor Chris will, will share that with you in a minute. Come on, let's sing. <laughs>